key words that will allow me to search for that image at a later stage. So again, you'll notice that up in the top here with SharePoint, you have a search box. So I can search this list or search this, lot, this site. By putting this additional information in to describe the item, it makes it much easier for me to locate at a later stage. You'll notice that it's simple to delete an item, to manage its permissions, to copy it and to check it out. And once again, you've got the option to send alerts. So again, document libraries and picture libraries are very similar in operation. Now, from here, what we can do is if we just want to create a simple, basic web page. So what we can do here is we simply go up to Site Actions, we go Create. So what I want to create here, you'll see I have a number of different options. I can create another document library, a form library, announcements, contacts, calendars. But what I'm going to do over here is create a basic web page. OK, so what I'm going to do is create a page called Basic. I'm going to stick it in my document library and I'm going to create it. So give that a few seconds to actually create a web page that is stored in the document library. And then once I have that information stored in there, I can then go and edit it. So at the moment you'll see here this is basically a blank page. Now what I can go in and I can do and put information about this is a web page. Again, I've got a rich text editor that I can bold, I can change the font, I can select colours, I can do basically just about anything I want, I can put in links, and so on. Now, you'll notice the important thing here is, is that the difference with a web page is, is I don't need something on my desktop to create and work with the page. This is all done through a web browser. So again, if I need to make changes to the web page, and here you can see those changes, I can simply do this through a web browser. So again, you could do this remotely on a PC without the need for having Word. If we go back to our policies library, we'll see that here's our basic document. And at the moment, it's checked out because we're obviously working on it. So again, what we can do now is if we check this in, this now becomes available to all users. And what I can now do is I can actually reference that page directly. So if I open this in a new browser window, you should see that it will display just the page. So again, you can set up a page and have it as an entry item if you so desire. So again, you can not only upload documents into a document library, but you can also create basic web pages which can contain just about any content that a normal web page does. So moving on from document libraries, we have something here called lists. So basically lists are areas which you can store information. So the first list that we'll look at is a calendar. So it's like a normal calendar. I can create a new item here. So I simply go into this and put uh, webinar, put the dates, the times, when it starts, when it finishes. I go OK, and you'll see I have a new item in the calendar for today. So hopefully, if we go down, we'll see that on the 26th, we've got the webinar of today. Now, again, a lot of the power of SharePoint is, is that you get more functionality by linking it with existing Office programs. So for example, my calendar, I can connect it to Outlook. So if I select that and allow Outlook to connect to the SharePoint calendar, I'll now be able to see and edit this information via my normal desktop Outlook. So give it a second to actually spin up and we'll have a look at that. So what we'll find here, and we allow access. Okay, so now what we've got here is you'll find that you have two calendars. We've got our normal personal calendar and we've got, I have to log in to give it access. So now what you'll find is I have two calendars. I have my SharePoint calendar and I have my normal calendar. And you'll see the event that I just created here 
in my SharePoint calendar. Now if I want that to be in my personal calendar, I can simply drag and drop this over here and it creates a copy for me. What I can also do is in Outlook 2007, I can use over, overlay mode. So I can overlay these calendars one on top of each other and as you can see, one lot of events, which is my personal events, are in light blue and the other events are in green. So again, I've got the ability to add multiple calendars, to link to multiple calendars and to display them in my Outlook program. Alright, so if we go back to home, if we have a look at another basic list, we've got uh, contacts. So for example, in this case we're looking at staff details. So again, if we have a look at a list here, you can put in obviously all the contact details that you want. You can add additional fields. And of course, another big advantage is, as we spoke about just then, is I have the ability to connect it to Outlook. So again, I can have a group of shared contacts maintained in a single location and then linked to my Outlook. So what we can then also do in lists is you also have an area for tasks. So I can create a task and what I can do is I can give it a priority, give it a status, give it a complete. I can assign it to somebody and put a start and a finish date on it. So again, this is a great way to keep track of information and things that need to be done, but it allows everybody in your team to see what's going on. And once again, you've got the ability to connect to Outlook to see these tasks without necessarily having to go into SharePoint. Now a good example of this that we found for customers is that one customer wanted a list that was the daily reception task. So for example, what had to happen was is that every day the receptionist had to go through and check off that they had done each of these items. Again, you can see this was a custom list created with an additional field here indicating when these tasks needed to be completed. So again, lists can be thought of as just columns and rows. So the other thing that we do have in lists, which maybe you've ha maybe have helped for some people, is we have the ability to create projects. So again, projects are basically a task list, but as you can see, it shows it in a Gantt table style arrangement. Now the advantage with this is we click on the task, we can actually move that task to another location, let it go, and then all the information about that task will be updated. So again, this may be a great way to follow through and make sure that certain processes are completed in the time frame that you're required. 